Well, hey, it is Monday once again here in the shop. Welcome, welcome, fish heads. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, although I understand that you may not be watching this on a Monday or in the morning. It is morning. It's Monday morning. Today is the 17th of August. We are flying through the summer. I've got some bigger baits for you guys, but I wanted to show you the finished dwarf garami in good light. Two coats of KBS, getting ready to dress this, and then I'm probably going to sell it. I'm going to go with 20 bucks shipped on this one, so if you guys are interested in that and you're in the States, I will ship it anywhere in the States for 20 bucks. So let me know. Drop me a comment. You can also direct message me at jenkravasi at jekyllbaits.com. There's always a link in the description below so you guys can find me there as well, or find me on Facebook. First come, first serve. I only made one of them, and it's a cool piece, and these little guys swim very well. So that is this one. And again, love the way it turned out. Jets and eyes on this. Little five millimeter deal. Big baits. Big baits. McClanahan order up. So one-eyed Willie. Kind of looks like Monsters, Inc., doesn't it? These things are great. Um, this was either he either wanted one of my yellow perch patterns or a shad or a, I'm sorry a bluegill pattern so we went with the perch on this hand cut stencil for the perch lines on here and then fairly thick mesh fairly thick layers this is four coats of KBS and I did four because of the the thickness and texture on the uh, the paint layers a little bit of red around the eye got these red fins these are from russ allen at insane custom stencils always like to make them transparent and i did the bottom fins as well just something a little different on here just a little bit of red around those fins and then your yellowish green into brown on that pattern and the one eye one eyed willie This is a Livingston. It glows when it hits the water. And that's one thing when you're painting, it will make the bait wet temporarily um, if you get paint or clear coat on these touch points. So the touch points on this particular Livingston are these eyelets. So, and I left a transparent, I barely did any white here so that the glow which is the glow in this part on the Livingston goes from here to the nose and it glows a very bright blue when it hits the water real good at night. He asked for this particular flame pattern. This is also, we're featuring quite a few uh, Jets and Lure eyes because John um, sent me a phenomenal care package, um, multiple, multiple sizes. So this seemed like it would work real, real well with this flame requested pattern that uh, Theodore Shane McClanahan had requested. Love the way it turned out. And very transparent, translucent white going into that flame tip on the face. He only asked for a clear coat on this reflex. So I gave him a double dose of KBS and you can see how beautiful and unblemished it is. There are no tricks to this. That is your reflex. And we've got a couple of top raters. I have a jerkbait pattern that's called a hot mess that was actually kind of put together with somebody's creative idea, oh God, three, four years ago. And the musky crowd really likes the pattern, and this is that pattern. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit modified. We have uh, Brian Best's lizard reptile pattern for a stencil in white on top. Again, John over at Jetson, um, and and he didn't, he had no idea that I was going to be doing different patterns or specific patterns. But I think this eye works extremely well with the uh, hot fluorescent magenta and the neon green 
in this. And then just the other side as well. And again, self-leveling, beautiful, beautiful KBS. I know, I know, you guys are probably sick. But you know what, it works, and if it works, can't fix what's not broken. He also requested a calico crappie. Gave some more natural looking eyes on this one. And then this will get dressed and out the door here in just a little bit. And then I pulled this partially out of the cradle. Um, I've already put the hooks back on this, but he requested a striper on this bee venom. So I gave him a custom striper pattern. I'll go ahead and pull it out for you guys so you can see both sides. So on these, if you're not familiar with big baits, and I, and again, I, I never admit to knowing it all. I, sh I absolutely do not know it all, and I learn every single day. But I try and pay attention where I can. And on this particular one, I noticed that, um, and, and I, I see a lot of big bait companies do this. The musky crowd, they... Um, they put the feather treble on the front instead of on the back. So, beefy hooks. Always clean off your touch points. If you have, and, and again, some of the Livingstons make sounds. Some of them light up. Some do both. On this particular one, it does make sounds underwater. So you really want to make sure that your touch points are cleaned off. And there are touch points all over this one as well. The eyelets are usually a trigger for when it's in water. And you can set them as well. There is a way to tune these lures to sound a little bit differently when they're underwater. And you can go to livingstonlures.com. And uh, the EBS multi-touch sound technology is manipulatable, if that's a word. I might have just pulled that out of my fictionary. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's got four different sound modes. You can, you can set it. You can program it. It's got a little bit of text and how to do it on the back of the bait, but it's a lot more in depth when you actually go to their website. And there is your rock bass, AKA striped bass, rock fish. It's been called a lot, but it's a really, really good bait. And these guys are heavy. Um, I wanna say three ounces on that one. I could be wrong. I'm not looking at it, but it's a heavy bait. And then we're going to finish up with a pair of trout. Um, these are obviously a brown and a rainbow that I have hand painted. And this has got a triple seal on. So once this is hard, it's rock hard, it's not going anywhere. And just some beautiful, this is obviously a breeding bow color. And on these, one of the things that I like to do with these tails is make them look as close to a real tail as possible. And you're, obviously you're not going to clear coat this hair. You, you never, ever, ever want to do that. But you can paint it. And yeah, it's going to come off in time but it's going to look super realistic for the first few days that you're using it. No harm, no foul. It doesn't have a weird scent. No, no stranger than the clear coat that goes on to these things, which also fades over time. So the, the biggest thing about these bull shad and, uh, or the bull bait, bull family of baits, this is not a bull shad, um, is to make sure that when you are cleaning off your epoxy or whatever it is that you guys use on these things, that these continue to free spin and that you are still able to tune and move those. So you want to you want to make sure that your pen points are clear and that your eyelets on the bottom are free spinning. That is a integral part of taking care and just basic proper maintenance on these baits. So they should always free spin, should always free spin. So take the extra effort and clean off any of the area around there. Or when you're painting on your epoxy or your KBS in my case, make sure that you're not mucking the area up around here. And that, 
my friends, is all the news is fit to print. That's what I've got for you guys this morning. I think I've gone through all the things that I have to show you. Going back to the drawing board, getting over to the spray bench, and I will see you guys on the next spray session. Cheers, happy casting, and I hope you have a fantastic week.